So let's take a uh, look at this idea of chromatic aberration using Optics Lab. I've set up a system here that's a point source, a lens made of a glass type called SF11. It's a dense glass, it's very dispersive, and we're looking uh, at the image plane here, at, and you probably can't see this on your screen, but this is about a quarter of a millimeter uh, white box where the red rays are focused down. If I go ahead and right click on the source and turn on green light and blue light as well, uh, you see that the green spot is much much bigger than the red spot and the blue spot is is bigger still uh, we've gone from a quarter millimeter spot up to almost a four millimeter spot or an increase of about sixteen times uh, with the blue light which shows that that either blue light doesn't focus as well or the focal uh, plane is in a different position so let's let's take a look at that let's go ahead and turn off our red light and our green light uh, click OK and then uh, surely it looks like the focus is here. Let's go ahead and move our plane to the best focus and in fact we see the blue light is focusing down to also just a little under a quarter millimeter uh, very very well. So chromatic aberration as you see here means that the the different colors of light have different focal points and we can see that again by turning on the red and the green light and you can see that now as we've moved the focal plane the blue spots very small the green spots a little bit bigger and we have a three millimeter diameter spot for the red light here again a factor of about twelve uh... between this um, we can see these a little bit more graphically if we go to mode measure curvature and what we'll see in fact is that we can see that the the focal planes are well shifted. This gives us a very clear measurement of it for different colors of light. Let me go back to normal ray trace. And this difference in the focal length uh, is dependent on the glass type. I'm going to go ahead and change my glass type now. Let's first of all turn off all rays except the red rays um, and go ahead and move <coughs> my focal plane back to an optimal position. I'm going to right click on this and turn my glass type from SF11, which is a very dispersive glass, <coughs> to the most common glass used in high quality optics, which is known as, as BK7 and what it stands for, I really have no idea. But if we do that, we'll need to again adjust our focal point because probably the focus of our lens has changed somewhat. And we see we have about, about a 0.4 millimeter field of view here. It's hard to see on your screen, I'm sure, but that's what we get with the red rays. But now if I go ahead and turn on blue and green rays in the system, uh, you'll see that in fact the blue spots, red spots, and green spots don't have such a large difference to them. The BK7 is less dispersive and there's less of a change in the focal length than you see with a very dispersive dense glass like SF11. The last thing we want to talk about with chromatic aberration is the idea of an achromat. And A is Greek for not, and chroma means color. So an achromat lens is one that is not color sensitive. It's, it's formed of two types of lenses made of two types of glass which are glued together. And the issue of an achromat and the advantage of it is that it is, has much less chromatic aberration than the lens of a singer, single color word. In fact, a well-designed achromat for certain wavelength ranges gives you essentially no chromatic aberration. And as you can see in this image, we have two different types of glasses represented by the two different colors of blue glass here. And that in fact, as the different colors of light go through this, they focus in generally pretty much the same point. And one of the exercises we'll be doing in the classroom and is in your reading is actually the procedure by which you design an achromatic lens. And it's, it's once you understand it, it's a fairly straightforward and simple procedure. And so that's about it for chromatic aberration. We'll get into essentially how to measure aberrations in the next few lectures.